welcome to part two of my summer prep series. My name is Melanie and I will be a seventh year second grade teacher in Pennsylvania, a major city in Pennsylvania. And I already started part one of this series. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, I will link it below. We're gonna jump right into other things that I have bought prepped and stored for my upcoming school year in my brand new school. If you like this type of content and if you want to see more, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends and let's get right into it. All right, so over here you see that I have a lot of things for my classroom and there's more on the other side of the room, but I think I'll start here. So I joined the bandwagon and I went ahead and on Michael's, I ordered online. I got this photo and craft keeper, which a lot of people use these for task cards and sensors. Um, I am going to be doing guided reading, so I may do them for sensors. I may do them for our intervention block. I'm not quite sure yet, but I do <laughs> want to have these. I don't really suggest buying things before you know what you're going to use them for, but in the beginning of my teaching career, I did do reading sensors. And eventually my school changed it so that the sensors were only independent reading, um, reading on the computer and um, the teacher. They came to the teacher you table twice for word work and then for book work. So it kind of changed a little bit, but just in case it goes back to how I started my career, I wanted to have these because I think they'd be very useful. I have three of these they're like scrapbook paper cases <laughs> that I have. Um, I have four, but one is broken, so I need to go return that. And I might use these for either decorations, uh, read aloud books, or science storage, whatever that looks like. Or like curriculum teacher book things. And then down here, <laughs> if you can even see, I have a one, two, three, four, five drawer organizer. I just put, I had a lot of pencils that I've collected over the years. I've asked when I first started teaching, I've asked for pencils for Christmas. I've asked for pencils for my birthday. So I have collected a lot of pencils. So I just um, put the sharpened ones up there. And I have the unsharpened ones uh, in a bin and I'll show you that later I use these for grammar um, the last time I was in person in school so they have three crayons because I use this worksheet that have um, that had you go back and find text evidence and you underline the first whatever it asked you to do with green and then one with yellow one with purple so I had those just in case students in their crayon boxes didn't have those colors and we weren't fighting over it um, they have very really high expectations on keeping these crayons whole and not broken and I put one in for everyone because I have a big box of crayons that I took those out of. This is just white paper, copy paper I like to have in my room. Here is where I'm storing those for right now. Here's where I'm storing those word wall folders until they can put those in their desks, which I'm so glad we have desks. That takes, um, so much storage away from my classroom storage issues. They don't have to have their own individual bins on a ledge somewhere, just put in your desk. And then how cute are these? I found these at Walmart actually. And they're just like the dollar store ones, but I think they're cuter. They match my color theme accent that I'm having with my, um, my theme. And they fit a whole box of 24 crayons. And I absolutely adore these. So each student, I might put their number on the inside. And each student can have that inside their desk if they have to, if they're not allowed to share materials. Even if they are allowed to share materials, each kid honestly just needs their own crayons. <laughs> anyway, they always fight over it. Crayons disappeared. Table crayons are just like, ugh. so now they're responsible for their own. If they need more, they can go get their own. All right. I, um, over your teaching career, you end up collecting things um, that your school didn't provide you, even if they eventually provide you with it. So I know that our math curriculum provides us with a class set of clocks. 
in my old school we eventually did get a class set of clocks but in the beginning we didn't have them so I already had ordered these um, clocks so just in case I need them for small group or whatever I, I have them you know I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna give them away because you never know what you have what breaks now I have extra I picked out one six of these bins. <laughs> Are you done? Okay. I picked up six of these bins from Dollar Tree because I was at a different Dollar Tree than my normal Dollar Tree and I saw that they matched my theme and I picked them up. I might use these also for curriculum books. I might use these for um, probably just my teacher items that I accumulate. I have binders that I use for extra worksheets so I can just pull out and make copies if I need to of non-curriculum. Non content things so I like to have those then all of this is sitting on my 10 drawer organizer here perfect color of course I love this color and right now I'm using it to store random little things that I have so I use these I made these and use these to teach on class kicks which is like an interactive worksheet creator and that we use for virtual teaching and I use this to help teach the buttons that they, the kids had to use. I know that some teachers do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all that. I don't think I'm going to use it for that because I don't like making copies too far in advance only because things change so much and then I get frustrated and confused because now I have like three sets of worksheets in the Tuesday um drawer and I don't know what I'm using what's for what week and I pull out the wrong one I've done it before so this might get used for centers or for um science or math materials not quite sure yet it'd be so funny if I do end up using it for Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday but we'll see I just feel like because I don't have a closet this year last year I had a um a closet with another filing closet in there. I had a lot of storage space that was tucked away that I could store things in and I'm not going to have that this year. So I feel like I needed more um, storage that I could just stick in a corner that still matches the theme. So I think I still will be able to use that. Up here, I got these from probably Target. <laughs> oh, Office Depot. I got this and this um, this had paper clips in it, one had thumbtacks or one had um, small binder clips and I took them out and put them in my teacher toolbox but I still like the way these look so I'm sure I'm going to sit them on my desk and use them for something. I have these left over from previous years. In the past I used to have these for kids for their pencils and I put about two or three pencils in here, maybe two pencils in a small eraser. Uh, so that each and then take their name on it so that each student had their own pencil case and we weren't fighting over pencils since students need their own materials this year i might go ahead and order more of these i don't know what the school is going to provide or if they're going to be bringing their own pencil cases so i'm not going to order them quite yet but just in case i do need to order them i like this as a reminder this is from the dollar store um, it came in a, I believe this one came in a three pack, a two or three pack, because they sell them in two or three packs. And I think I'm going to, I have about five of them all together. I have some multicultural crayons that I think I'm going to put in there in case students, or I might put them in a big bin, I'm not sure. In case students are coloring themselves, doing self portraits, and they need to find their shade, because let's face it, we're not all the same. So. I have those just in case. I have a little pinky piece thingy from Dollar Tree that I'm going to put on my desk. I have these little bins. I've used these in the past for dull pencils and sharp pencils. So I'll either use these and take them down to a table or I'll use mason jars. I haven't decided yet. But they're just a dollar. I love containers. So I just grab some. I've had this in the past. I used to put, we used to have lunch cards that kids had to take downstairs. Um, I've used these for lunch cards before. And then this big bin I like. I can use this for indoor recess materials, for math materials, and stick them in a closet. 
I used to use these for pencils, as you could probably tell, because I used to teach um, two different cohorts for writing. So I used to like to separate their writing materials using those so that one class wasn't short shorter than the other or blame the other class for not having pencils, whatever, I kept them separate. We get rid of that drama. Down here is more decorative things. I have these little wreaths. They had, uh, Michael's had like a 75% off sale for spring floral the other day. So these were like $5, so cute. I think I'm gonna hang them up on my bulletin board and on my door and maybe above my uh, whiteboards. I have a little plant back there. Fake plants are the way to go. No one has time to be watering. <laughs> A teacher gave this to me um, some years ago, and I thought it was so cute. I'm gonna hang this up. I hung it up in my old classroom. I love it so much. And another teacher gave this to me for our Secret Santa, which we had called Secret Snowflake. And that's definitely gonna get hung up in my room as well, displayed. Here's some extra calendar materials, and I'll show you my calendar in a bit. Let me get down here, oof. flower I made. I do have this contact paper, this wood contact paper that I got from Amazon. Hopefully it's good. I plan on using this for my doors. I have four rolls. I plan on using this for my doors and if I have room I'd love to put this on my teacher desk as well. I have this border which I think is so pretty. I feel like I'm going to double up on border. So I have this like black and white Graham type of border. And I think I'm gonna layer that with this one. Since I only have one actual bulletin board, I only bought one of each. And if I feel like I need more, then I'll just order more, no big deal. And I might also create fake bulletin boards if I have wall space for it so I can use for other things. I've also seen teachers use their teacher desk as um, kind of like a bulletin board, a place where they display things, so I might do that as well. And little butterflies I found at the Dollar Tree that I might hang up around my library. Next over, here are the Stairlight containers I was talking about. So I like to separate mine by subject. So we have writing, math, and science. This is not where I'm going to be storing my worksheets for the kids. This is more where I'm going to be storing my supplemental materials for writing, math, and science. I will show you um, a little later where I store the worksheets that I'm gonna be handing out for that day. I'm so glad that I'm only teaching one cohort this year, so it makes organizing my handout so much easier and then this is all for guided reading um in the past i've had two uh guided reading groups so for each uh so for my guided reading i just have three just in case i have three groups i might even have four groups but to divide their materials in when they come back to the u table so i have what they'll need i don't know where i got these bins from I don't remember buying them. I had four. I don't even know where the fourth one is. But I have these for, I'll probably store cubes in it and other materials, math materials like that and use um, the big filing cabinet that's in my room, the ones that open, like the filing closet. I might use that to store my math materials like I did in my other school because one, you can open it up, students can get it, your helper can uh, get what they need, call on a friend, hand out materials students can get it themselves and it's all right there and I don't have to go all around the room to get different materials. I have some random binders that I have up there. I'll show you my calendar here. I bought this black uh, pocket chart thing <laughs> from Amazon and I wanted it black because it really matches the theme of the letters that I laminated or the numbers that I laminated and printed out. I do have room to put like a today is 
whatever. But I really like to have students learn how to write the formal date with month, day, comma, year. So I might have that. I might have like Friday, comma, September 3rd, comma, 2021. I might uh, do something down here like that. I haven't decided yet. That's why it's blank because I'd have to go back and edit like that type of template myself, which is fine. But I haven't decided yet, so I kept it blank. But how cute is this? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I can just change out. This looks like it was specifically meant for a calendar. You can tell by the day. But these numbers fit in there perfectly. I could change them out if needed. And I also printed out... Boom. I also printed out a bunch of, like, holidays. So I inserted clip art pictures. I have, like, days off, Groundhog's Day, winter break so that I'll just replace the day with those holidays and birthdays as they come up. Cause students really enjoy that. I've always had students walk up to my calendar <laughs> in the beginning of the day, they look at whose birthday it is, they look at, they count to see how long a break is. And trust me, teachers are counting too, so I don't even mind. That's my calendar. Stick that back up there. In this bin, I have my, basically my teacher favorites, and I'll um, go more into that, because I'll probably change the bin once I go over my library. Here is a bin full of miscellaneous things that I had in one of the closets <laughs> in my school, name plates, because I had a Dr. Seuss theme, a globe, there's like a bunch of random things in here, sentence strips, so I'll probably go over that, go through that as I go into my classroom, see what I need, see what I don't need. I have my scissors and I had, one year I had like six left-handed students. So I always make sure I add left-handed scissors. All the ones that have like a special design are left-handed scissors because cutting is hard enough for second graders with fine motor issues. So I definitely love having left-handed scissors to make it a little easier. Some supplemental um, books that I have, some were given to me, some I bought from like Five Below, Target, Lakeshore. And I like to use these just to make quick worksheets. When it's testing time, students get done, or some students need to make up on a makeup test and you need the other kids to do something. I like these worksheets for this because it's really, it's like, it's more fun for them, but it still uh, gets the content to them as well. And then, this is what I use to store my worksheets. So I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I use this to store my worksheet and I use um, post-it notes to store what subject they are. And that's what I use to pass them out. It's small, it's concise, it helps me not to over copy things <laughs> so I don't have stacks of paper. I can still plan for the week if I need to, but I'm not trying to plan for like copies for three months and then not even need a whole week or something like that. So I definitely like using this instead. I can sit it in the front of my room, use that for my copies. It's easy to tell the sub where this is and what copies they need. So I have that for for that. All right. And then, oh gosh. Up here, I just have a lot of my borders that I've collected. I have my magnetic borders. Um, my, I just found these at Target. I only got one pack of it, because I might use these for the Inspirational People by, um, elementary in the mitten and I might use this side so I really like that and I like to outside you know how you have sometimes you have the cork uh, strip to hang work bulletin work on outside of your classroom I like to use borders for that too it makes it look a little nicer and here are my other generic borders red Dr. Seuss like I said I had a Dr. Seuss theme here's some die cut letters that I've from my like dollar tree that I collected that I probably won't even use. 
And then, like I said, I have my number line if I need a bigger number line. And I have my alphabet chart if I need a bigger alphabet chart. And that's all there. These plants that you see, I'll most likely be <laughs> taking that into my classroom. They're just kind of here. Um, I don't know if I like them here in this apartment, so I might take them with me. I have I have a Polaroid camera that's actually mint color, like works out perfectly. So I'm going to hang this up and hang Polaroid pictures of my kids as I as they're working hard and I'm going to label it like caught working hard and they really do enjoy seeing things like that. I have the infamous better than paper bulletin wood paper here. I usually use fabrics for my bulletin boards in the past because fabric doesn't fade. Um, I can hang them up there even if staples, even if it gets wrinkly once you take everything down. Once you start putting stuff back up, it's like brand new and I've used that for years. But I think I'm going to use this for my theme this year. I only have one bulletin board and with the rest, I can either refresh it over the years or I can use this from my desk if my contact paper runs out. And then over here, we have some things that I got from Home Goods actually. Oh, let me get back on the floor for this one. So I have this this hanging file holder that I think I'm gonna put right by my door in the front of the room. And I bought these cute files off Amazon. How cute are they? I'll try to link them down below if I can. They are so cute. There's a random clipboard that I found and I stuck in here. But I'm gonna use this for like my mailbox when people from the office come by to drop stuff off or things that need to go home. I'm gonna put that in here. I do plan on having one of those 30 slot mailboxes for my students because what I cannot stand is when kids or parents say, my kid never got that, my kid never got that. I can go right over to their mailbox and I'm like, yep, you're right, because it's sitting right here in their mailbox. Even if they're not here, my kids know if I have a mailbox person, they put one in each mailbox or I put one in each mailbox. So, but for when they give you the whole packs of things that need to go home, they can put it right in there. My personal files, um, like dismissal plans, um, student allergies, nurse slips, things like that can go in one of the drawers as well. And I have like this little macrame, oh, if it wants to come out, that I failed at Home Goods. I thought that was cute. It's cute and homey to hang somewhere in my classroom, maybe behind my desk. And of course, you know, I went to Target. Of course, I got a big thing of chalk because I love chalk, my kids love chalk. I don't mind if their hands get chalky. You just have to teach them not to touch each other when their hands are like that. Got two more containers. This might be my hand in bin, um, turn in bin. And I might use another one for something else, I don't know. And I got this to decorate my wall between my windows. Maybe hang a little plant on there. I do have them. So I thought that was cute too. I don't even think it was $20 to be completely honest from home. <laughs> I think it was even cheaper than that. Here I have my teacher toolbox. Um, these labels came with that TPT floral bundle. And I use um, the edible, the editable version so that I can put my own um, items on here, depending on like, what I feel like I always end up needing. So we have pins, that's for generic pins, but my must have, one of my teacher must haves is erasable pins. It doesn't look like much because I go through them so often, so I need more. But if you don't have erasable pens i need you to get your life and get you some erasable pens trust me they they're kind of like ink joy pens um because some of them are gel so they're kind of like ink uh joy pens but you can erase them if you make a mistake they're perfect for math they're perfect for grading i absolutely love them i do have some flare pens i was gifted flare pens i like them 
I like them for my um, calendar and things, but I mostly go for erasable pens. I have fasteners, mechanical pencils. Um, a lot of my students call them lead pencils. I grew up calling them mechanical pencils. What did you grow up calling them? All right. <laughs> Dry erase markers, the skinny ones. White out, just because I have it. I, I literally never use white out, but I already had white out, um, so I just, I don't know, put them in there little mini erasers and all that these also have things in it but either extra things or duplicate things or like things that didn't need a label hairpins safety pins for you know those those type of days batteries oh extra oh what is this uh, oh this is magnetic tape I put it next to magnets <laughs> washi tape which is above the other washi tape that I have um, these? more magnet clips small popsicle sticks all the fun things I love my sticky note drawer it's already full <laughs> I have a lot at home as well my crayons because I make a lot of anchor charts and posters for kids, so I like to have my own personal crayons. And I will probably add my diversity crayons and markers in there as well. I'll add my, I have diversity markers as well, so I'll put that in there. Expo markers, of course, filled to the brim. Chart markers, you need to have some flip chart markers so that your ink doesn't run to the back of your marker as you are filling out things for your class while it's displayed up on the board. You need flip chart markers. As Sharpies and other permanent markers, my double-sided tape and reinforcers, clothespins, I use all of these things, honestly and truly. Band-Aids I use especially because I bruise myself, the kids bruise themselves. I'm gonna put some of these in their sanitation station, but if I feel like they're using Band-Aids just to use them, um, I might take them away. That's my dog, she wants to join us. Excuse me, Basil. Velcro. So yeah, and then I have, right now I just have this little sign that I found at Hobby Lobby. Everything is figure outable, and that is so true. And I have two bells. I actually have three bells. I don't even know what my favorite one is right now. But I have three bells that I've just accumulated over the years. Two was a, oh no, 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 no. One was, a, was from my school, so I kept it at my old school because that's where I was given it, so I kept it there. This was given to me by a teacher my first year, and then this I got maybe my second year. I have a bunch of receipts up there just in case I get reimbursed for um, some of the things that I got, like the um, some individual containers and things that I got for the students. Not everything, obviously, I wouldn't get reimbursed for this, it's not necessary. But some things for the students, just in case, and my hand sanitizer. Yep, definitely just took that from my mom's house. She said it was old, I was like, oh, okay, it's for my classroom. And how cute is this little itty bitty chair from Hobby Lobby? My dog loves it too, it's like little pencils. I love this chair. It is way too small for a second grader, but I'm still gonna stick it into my library anyway. I wanted it, if it was bigger, I would've used it as like a VIP chair for like a student incentive, but I don't know. It's, it's, I didn't wanna give it back. It was like $13, I love it so much. And last but not least, woo. Now I'll go through all of my books and things on another day. But last but not least, I have all of these containers. I got half of them from Dollar Tree. I got half of them from Amazon, the ones with the black handles. And I'm just storing like things in here that don't need to get touched all throughout the year. But I still um, probably need all of these and I keep them I'll keep them in those cabinets above the cubbies for students. So I have a big thing of masking tape. I actually don't need masking tape. Masking tape helps none. It does not help stick things to the wall. 
if you know the type of walls that schools have like if you know you know these are useless which is probably why I have so much the only things they're really good for is like X mark the spot like if you want students to um, learn to stand in a certain place or put something in a certain place in the class maybe you'll put an X there until they know it that's literally all they're good for I have random things that I keep in my own personal teacher desk um, I have the two plug-in thingy mabob um, for air fresheners. I have a little small brush, more band-aids, um, shout wipes, just random things I like to keep in my, the hand warmers that I like to keep in my desk away from children that I probably will need. Things I've accumulated over the years such as math manipulatives, those are my personal ones that I bought, money, uh, flash cards, all different types of flash cards and task cards. These are unsharpened pencils that I'm so blessed to have so many. Um, arts and craft things like chalk, stamp, um, paint brushes, baggies and paper bags and things like that. Glue sticks, permanent markers, dry erase markers, uh, crayon boxes, erasers and pens. Reward things, what we'll tickets, stickers, all types of those type of things. And I organize those so when students come in, if they donate things to the classroom, then I'll have a, a place to put it. I'll probably end up getting more of these dollar store bins too, because these were kind of expensive for, I think I got 10. So I'll just get dollar store bins, they work just as well. And then more of my library. Thank you for watching part two of this summer prep organizational series. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your other teacher friends. Also, follow me on Instagram at elementary in the city. That's elementary and the city. Oh my gosh, do I know my own Instagram name? <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye.